dear students in the previous class we have discussed network externalities it is nothing but external effects on demand and it is a concept introduced by harvey Leibniz in 1950 network externalities as a concept was introduced by Harvey Leibniz in 1950 there are three types of network externalities or exter external effects these are bandwagon effect snob effect and webland effect bandwagon effect snob effect and webland effect these are known as exter external effects network externalities are also known as external effects because they affect demand outside the intrinsic value of the commodity outside the intrinsic value of the consumer commodity for example in the case of bandwagon effect a consumer will purchase more of the commodity as others purchase in the case of snob effect a per person purchase the commodity to satisfy to fulfill his desire to be exclusive webler effect arises due to the desire of a person to consume commodities with a high conspicuous value high conspicuous value so these external effects affect not only the demand they also affect the elasticity of demand and also even the sign of price elasticity of demand so the supplier of the commodity must be aware of whether this network externalities or external effects in the form of bandwagon effect snob effect or webler effect exists in the case of commodities produced by them so we first consider in detail bandwagon effect bandwagon effect as discussed in the previous class bandwagon effect is an example of a positive network externality and in this case the consumer will buy more units of the commodity when demand by others increases and this is due to consumers desire to jump in the bandwagon jump in the bandwagon when more when the purchase by others increases a consumer will purchase more because of his desire to jump into the bandwagon and be in fashion be in fashion be in fashion to fit in with their peers to fit in with their peers so bandwagon effect manifests itself as a shift factor in the demand for a commodity bandwagon effect manifests as a shift factor in the demand for the commodity moreover it feeds on itself since 
a small persons acquire the commodity it further influence others and it keep on shifting the demand curves when more people purchases the commodity it further influences demand and the demand curve go on shifting and leibenstein says that the increased demand that is shift in the demand curve is based on increased purchases by others but this will not go on continuously because of diminishing marginal external effects due to income limitation when more and more per persons purchase the commodity quantity demanded of the commodity by any consumer will increase but this will not go on indefinitely because of diminishing marginal external effects <laughs> diminishing marginal external effects imposed by the income constraints of the consumer now let us explain this bandwagon effect with the a graph with the graph suppose that this is the demand curve d1 for some commodity uh, it is based on the belief that the demand for the commodity in the market is q1 the collective demand for the commodity is q1 d1 is based on the belief that collective demand for the commodity in the market that is aggregate demand is q1 with the perfect knowledge with the perfect knowledge if the demand is actually at q1 the price is p1 if the with the perfect knowledge then if actual quantity is q1 the corresponding price is p1 so these are the equilibrium prices and quantities if actual demand is d2 d2 if actual demand is d2 and uh, the price is say p and if actual demand is d2 and quantity is q2 if uh, the consumers believe that the quantity is due to d2 the demand curve is d2 with the perfect knowledge if quantity is q2 and price is p2 these are the equilibrium prices and quantities similarly if the consumers perceive that demand is d3 then the price is q3 and p3 q3 p3 so as you can see the demand curves keep shifting due to the positive ma marginal external effects on consumption as price changes so we can analyze what happens to quantity demanded as price changes suppose that price decreases from p1 to p2 if the demand curve is d1 quantity demanded increases to q star 1 along the same demand curve d1 quantity demanded is q star 1 and this is the normal price effect the normal price effect is p2 q star 
one. But in this particular case, as price decreases, bandwagon effect takes over. Because as quantity demand increases, then it will lead to others to increase their preferences and there is a shift in the demand curve to D2. So quantity, actual quantity becomes Q2. And if there is a further decrease in price P3, instead of moving along the same, we have a further increase in Q3 like this. If there is no bandwagon effect, price quantity relation is shown by D1. But due to bandwagon effect, when more and more people purchases the commodity, quantity demanded will increase and there is a shift in the demand curve. And uh, tracing the locus of these equilibrium points of the outward shifting demand curves, we have what is known as DW. We have what is known as DW and DW is known as the DB, known as the bandwagon demand curve. And as you can see, the bandwagon demand curve is more elastic than more elastic than the individual demand curves. Because in addition to the normal price effect, there is also the bandwagon effect. As, uh, as more and more people purchase, and if a consumer come to know about this, the demand curve shifts. And this price effect, so <coughs> the total effect can be divided into a price effect and a bandwagon effect. Let us see how as the price decreases from P1 to P2, movement along the same demand curve is price effects. So Q1, Q star 1 is the price effect. Q1, Q star 1 is the price effect. And Q star 1, Q2 is, Q star 1, Q2 is the, sorry, Q star 1, Q2 is the bandwagon effect and Q1, Q2 is the total price effect, total effect. So the price effect, bandwagon, sorry, this is the price effect, the bandwagon effect and the total effect. So the total effect is now divided into a price effect and a bandwagon effect. Now remember this, although uh, bandwagon effect is generally associated with uh, stylishness, farts, etc., positive uh, network externalities exist due to other factors also. For example, larger the number of persons owning a particular goods, greater will be its intrinsic value. Consider the case of mobile phones. If everyone is owning a mobile phone, its intrinsic value will increase because you can use it for messaging and so many other activities. Similarly, when more and more persons purchase CD players, intrinsic value of CD players will increase. So in the real world, there is positive network externalities in the case of many commodities. So remember, one more point. If uh, you believe that Q1 is the quantity, then the demand curve is D1. When it is actually uh, perceived by the consumers, quantity equilibrium Q1, equilibrium price P1. When the price decreases, purchases increase naturally, but 
two types of effects are there that is an increase in quantity due to a reduction in price not only that an increase in quantity as a result of the fact that more and more persons purchase it that is the bandwagon effect so total effect is the sum total of this price effect and the bandwagon effect so in the case of commodities with the positive network externalities or bandwagon effect this bandwagon effect should also be taken into account while deciding uh, uh, policies about selling the commodity and other strategies by the producers of such a commodities